morning and welcome to Brightmore Kids. Happy Independence Day. We hope you have a great day celebrating the freedoms that we have in our country. But today, we're starting a brand new series called Joseph Living the Dream. This series will be going throughout the summer and will cover many years in his life. That's right. We're going to learn lessons from Joseph from Genesis 37 and 39 through chapter 45. Each week, our friend Boudreaux is going to help us with our lesson. So, here he is now. Hey, how y'all doing, kids? It's me, Boudreaux. That is pronounced Boudreaux. Evidently, I'm supposed to be around here to host some kind of series. So you know what? We better get started. Now listen here, I may not look like a very smart fella, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I am. I made it all the way through the third grade, and I'm only 32. That's twice as far as my Uncle Felix ever made it. Huh, who's the dummy now? I just happen to have a huge brain, and I know lots of stuff. For instance, I know that when you're born, you have 300 bones. But for some reason, when you're an adult, you only have 206. I want to know, where do the other 410 bones go? I also happen to know that it is physically impossible for you to sneeze with your eyes open. Here, let me grab this piece of wood I am highly allergic to. Oh. See what I tell you? I know a lot of things, and there are some things I just have questions about. Like, how long can I grow my toenails out without them breaking off? How small was the itsy bitsy spider? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? And speaking of eggs, why does the Easter Bunny carry a basket of eggs? Rabbits don't lay no eggs. If you throw a cat out of a window while driving down the interstate, does it become kitty litter? I have a lot of other questions too, but my biggest question is, do you have to be perfect to do big things for God? Well, I know that there are a lot of people out there that think they're just not smart enough, or maybe they're not old enough, or they're not good enough to be used by God. They think because of maybe the family that they came from, or the fact that they had done lots of wrong stuff in the past, that they just can't be used by God to do big stuff. But that ain't true. It don't matter where you come from or what you've done. God's got amazing plans for you. In this series, we're gonna take a look at a guy in the Bible that was far from perfect. His name was Joseph. Joseph had a really rotten childhood, and his family was all messed up. His brothers hated him, his dad didn't treat his other kids fairly, and some of his other relatives were liars, cheaters, and even murderers. They were just all around dirtbags. It don't sound like he was somebody that could be used to do big things, does it? But the truth is, God used Joseph to do some amazing stuff. It don't matter what your past is, it just matters if you ask God for forgiveness that he will forgive you. Your past does not determine your future. You can do big stuff for God. All right, well, it's time for me to get back to frog gigging, so I got me some good dinner tonight, because that's how we do it down here in the bayou. And it's time for you to get into today's lesson about Joseph, entitled, Nobody's Perfect. Well, until we see each other again, I'm telling you, keep living the dream. Many of us think that our past, our family's history, or our supposed lack of ability exempts us from being eligible to be used by God. If we use those items as a checklist, most of us would most likely be eliminated from consideration of being used by Him. God, however, doesn't see those things the way that we do. God looks beyond the outward appearance and the present circumstances to see what we can become. If we allow God he can take our lives and use them in big ways. Today, we will learn from Joseph's past, his family and the situation that was less than perfect. Yet, God used Joseph in a mighty way, just as he can use you if you're willing. So right now, let's see what's up. What's up, kids? I haven't seen you guys in so long. A Big Ray's been doing a great job, but I'm back to tell you our what's up. And it is, no matter who you are or what you've done, 
God can use us. And who is us? Us is everyone. Okay, so I'm gonna say it a few more times just so we can all get it in our heads. It's kind of easy. It's like a nice little rhyme almost. Okay, it's no matter who you are or what you've done, God can use us, everyone. Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time. No matter who you are or what you've done, God can use us, everyone. Okay, we're gonna have a competition between the boys and the girls. We haven't done competitions in a while. So I need the girls to stand up first. You're gonna repeat it after me as loud as you can. And on the word everyone, we're gonna spin like this. Everyone, okay? Just, just like that. Okay, ready? Count of three, repeat after me. One, two, three. No matter who you are, or what you've done, God can use us. Everyone. Great job, girls. Sit down, boys. Stand up. Repeat it after me as loudly as you can. On the count of three. One, two, three. No matter who you are, or what you've done, God can use us. Everyone. Great job, let's have the boys and the girls do it together. I remember I saw you guys at VBS and y'all were so loud I still can't hear. So I wanna hear you even louder than that. On the count of three, everybody, boys and girls, repeat after me. One, two, three. No matter who you are, or what you've done, God can use us. Everyone. Great job, boys and girls. Remember that no matter who you are or what you've done, anything, it doesn't matter. God can still use you. And that's what's up. Hey kids, my name is Bolt Spleen. <laughs> Nothing? Y'all never heard of me? That's all right. I'm still trying to break into the local daredevil scene. That's right. Take a look at me. I'm a daredevil. And I have been doing death-defying stunts in my head for about three to four days now. My ultimate goal and dream is to quit my job at Bed Bath & Beyond and do this full time. But my dream of being a daredevil almost didn't come true if it wasn't for my dear old Bubby. That's my Nana. She fully funded my Kickstarter. Part of the conditions where I was also supposed to do shout outs to her friends at the Lone Palm Community Estate. So, Bert, Fred, hope you guys are doing well. Tony, hope you find your teeth. Now, I also will be performing the most terrifying, death-defying stunts you've ever seen. Stick, tree, huzzah, stuff like that. But once I perform those tricks and stunts, I'm gonna need you to help me spread the word on the YouTubes so I can finally feel my ultimate joy and goal and dream of being on the Oprah Winfrey show. Was that? She's not on TV no more. Fine. On the Jay Leno show. Huh? David Letterman. Arsenio? Fine. How about I just get on Family Feud with Steve Harvey? But before we get to our stunts, and we're going to get to them, let's learn today's power verse. Today's power verse says, Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Huzzah! That was a great power verse. But you know what? I'm gonna need some help from my future stunt artists out there. Let's have all those crazy girls stand up and say it with me on the count of three, okay? All right, here we go. One, two, three. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. 
2 Corinthians 5.17. Great job, girly girls. You can have a seat. Now, I need all the wild boys to stand up and say the power verse with me on the count of three. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17. All right, kids, here we are on location to my first stunt. But before we do that, I just start thinking about our power verse today and how when we accept Jesus into our lives, we become a new creation. We get a fresh start. And no matter who you are or what you've done, Jesus can use you. Woo! So why don't we have everybody stand up and let's say the power verse together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Three. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Great job, everybody. You can sit down. Ha, let's get to that stunt. Come on, follow me. <laughs> Here we are. I'm about to do something crazy. I'm going to jump off this 14-story building from here all the way into that. Right, so let me just say this as I will for all my stunts. Kids, don't try this at home. Ha <laughs> ha, that is unless you've got a jumpsuit, then you're authorized to do whatever you want. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do the jump, ready? Reggie, you sure this is safe? He didn't answer, but I'm just gonna go with it. Here we go, one, two, three. Uh, that was pretty good, huh, kids? Right over the bucket, like I said I was going to, on my face, so, uh, uh success! Uh, all right, well, it's Bolt Mangle Spleen, and uh, you gotta catch me next time for my next death-defying stunt. You never know what I'm going to do next. <laughs> See you next time. Today's Bible story is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 37. It is a story about a famous hero in the Bible named Joseph. Joseph's life didn't begin with a very heroic start. He was just a normal, ordinary young man born into a regular average family. When Joseph was about 17 years old, he started taking care of his father's sheep. He did a very good job because he knew how important these sheep were to his father. His brothers also worked in the field with him. Many times, Joseph saw his brothers do things that were terrible, even sinful. Joseph knew he couldn't keep what his brothers were doing to himself, so he went to his father and told him, Father, I have a very bad report to bring to you about my brothers. His brothers, they got in trouble, so they were very angry at Joseph for telling on them. His father, however, was very pleased with Joseph. In fact, Joseph's father loved him much more than his brothers. Joseph was by far his father's favorite son. Now that wouldn't have been so bad if his father had kept quiet about the fact that Joseph was his favorite. But Joseph's father, Jacob, did something that really made things hard for Joseph. Jacob had a colorful coat made for Joseph. He placed it on Joseph and made Joseph wear it proudly. Of course, Joseph's brothers did not like this at all. They hated Joseph even more because their father showed Joseph so much special attention. None of them got a colorful coat, only Joseph. The Bible says that Joseph's brothers hated him so much they couldn't even speak a kind word to him ever. Can you imagine how hard it must have been to have such a dysfunctional family? It would be easy for us to look at how messed up Joseph's life and relationships with his brother was and how messed up his whole family relationships were and think there's no way can God can use someone like that. Joseph was from a messed up family. Well, what we will learn from our lesson today is that even with all those problems, God will use Joseph in a great way. God's story, Joseph. So part of God's story is about a guy named Joseph and it begins like this. 
Once there was a guy named Joseph who had 10 older brothers and one younger one. When Joe was a boy, he was his dad's favorite. In fact, his dad liked him so much better than his brothers that he gave Joe a special gift to prove it. You can imagine this made his brothers jealous. And Joe only made things worse. He told his brothers about dreams he had where he was ruling over them. Well, this made Joe's brothers furious. One day they were working and saw Joe coming. They said, here comes that dreamer. They threw Joe into a dark pit. They might have left him there forever, but they met some men traveling from Egypt and sold Joe to them as a servant instead. They thought that was slightly nicer than leaving him in a pit. Then they went home and told their father Joe had been killed by a wild animal. This broke their dad's heart. Kids, these brothers were really bad news. Selling a sibling is never a good idea, ever. But the Bible says the Lord was with Joe. When Joe was a servant, he worked for a really important rich guy named Potiphar. And Potiphar liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of the whole house. Joe was happy until one day he was blamed for something he didn't do, and Potiphar sent him straight to jail. Well, God was still with Joe, even in prison. The guard decided he liked Joe so much, he put him in charge of all the other prisoners. Then God gave Joe special knowledge about dreams. When two prisoners had dreams, Joe knew what they meant, so he told them. Two years later, Egypt's ruler called Pharaoh had a dream, and nobody knew what it meant. But by now, one of the two prisoners Joe had helped was out of jail and working for Pharaoh. He told Pharaoh about Joe, and God helped Joe figure out what Pharaoh's dream meant. But Pharaoh's dream was really more of a nightmare. It meant that everybody in Egypt would have food for seven years, then be hungry for seven years. Joe told Pharaoh the only way to survive was to store food during the seven good years. Well, Pharaoh thought Joe's idea was brilliant. He put him in charge. During the seven hungry years, nobody could eat without getting food from Joe. He was like a human vending machine. Well, remember how Joe had 11 brothers? Like everybody else, they had to get food from Joe. And when they came, they didn't even recognize their brother. But Joe knew who they were. He secretly tested them to see if they changed. After all, they did throw him in a pit and sell him. Finally, he couldn't hide who he was from his brothers anymore. He told everyone to leave the room because he was about to cry. After sobbing for a few minutes, he told them, I'm your brother, Joseph. I'm the one you sold. The brothers couldn't believe it. They had hurt Joe, but God had taken care of him during the good times and the bad. Even with everything they had done to Joe, he forgave them because he was willing to follow God, even when it was hard. Joe told them, you plan to harm me, but God planned it for good. And God used Joe to save many lives, including the family that was part of God's special rescue plan. And that's the story of Joseph. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Joe was his dad's favorite. His brother sold him. Potiphar put Joe in charge. Joe was sent to jail. The guard put Joe in charge. Pharaoh had a bad dream. Joe told him what it meant. Pharaoh put Joe in charge. Joe's brothers had to come to him for food. Joe forgave them. This was part of God's rescue plan. And that's a part of God's story. Have you ever looked at your life and asked the question, can God really use someone like me? You know, you look around and see people doing all kinds of big things for God. Pastors, missionaries, teachers, worship leaders, and even other kids. Then you think to yourself, those people must be special. They must have grown up in a special family in order to be used by God like that. God could never use someone like me. Some kids look at themselves and think that God can't use them because of something that they've done in the past, something that they've gone through, or some kind of family that they came from. It is not true. Let's look at Joseph's life to see some of the things about his family. Joseph was born into a pretty messed up home. Joseph had 10 stepbrothers, a stepsister, all living in the home at the same time. Now that is one big and very blended family. Joseph's dad showed that Joseph was the favorite by giving him a beautiful coat of many colors, but didn't give his other brothers anything. Joseph wasn't perfect himself either. As we learned in our Bible story, several times he tattled on his brothers and got them in big trouble. Joseph's choices weren't always the best. So, 
there you have it joseph's situation now when you listen to this description of joseph's life would you ever think that he would end up being someone big for god probably not but as we will find out later in this series god does use joseph to do amazing things for him but how how can god use someone with such a messed up life messed up family and messed up everything it's very simple nobody's family is perfect we look at other people's families and we think their family is so perfect we look at our family a lot of the time and we go oh man we're messed up some of you might come from families that are divorced or single parent families or blended families or both your parents live in your home some of you might come from homes where your family members are dealing with things that are not good depression other things like that lost their job whatever it may be you might think my family is so messed up god can never use me to do big things for him the truth is god can use you even if your family situation isn't exactly perfect nobody's family is perfect joseph's wasn't and neither is yours neither is mine we've been watching some videos at home of the past when i was like seven or eight and it amazes me what I see that was caught on video. My dad would have his uh, recorder and he'd be filming us and all of a sudden he put it down and all we would see is the carpet. And in the background you can hear us talking and you can hear one of my sisters whining about something and me bumping into something. Even when I look back at my life, I can see that there was times where things didn't go always perfectly in my house or with my attitude or with how I treated people. And yet God still chooses to use my family and he can choose and does use your family too. Nobody's past is perfect. Joseph made some really bad decisions in the way that he handled his relationship with his brothers. He showed off his coat of many colors, put it in their face that he was the favorite, and tattled on them all the time. He didn't do everything exactly right all the time, but God still used him to do big things for him. Boys and girls, nobody's past is perfect. One time when I was younger, I was at a garage sale, and I remember my mom was like, we might get this dresser. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna take this Sharpie and write my name on it to make sure that it was ours. Even though that's not right because it's a permanent marker on a dresser. How many of you know that if you do that, you're gonna get in trouble? Luckily for us, the old life is gone and we have a new life and a new chance to do something big for God no matter what we've done. God forgave Joseph and he will forgive you too. God can use anyone. It doesn't matter what your past looks like, what your family looks like, or any of those things. Not one bit. When you look at this lump of clay that I have here, see it? You probably think that this really can't become much, right? You look at it and you say, what a boring blob of clay. It's dirty, it doesn't look good, it must be useless, it's smelly. What will it be worth? But you're wrong. Sure, by itself, it's just a piece of clay. It's just a nasty lump, right? But in the hands of a master potter, it can become something amazing. When you look at a potter's work, you go, whoa, that's beautiful. See this pot right here? Well, it's not a pot, it's a mug, but it's made out of pottery. And yes, it's painted, but once upon a time, it was just a lump of clay. And now it's a work of art. God does the same thing. He is the ultimate potter. He uses and shapes and molds and he makes something that looks like this that's soft and smelly makes it into something that's beautiful that's fused a potter he uses his wheel and he makes something like this like i just said the bible says the god is the potter and we are the clay in jeremiah 18 6 god says as the clay is in a potter's hand so are you in my hands you might think hmm can god really use me my family isn't perfect. My past isn't perfect. I'm not perfect. But God says, give your life to me. I will mold you and shape you and turn you into a work of art. You may feel like a dirty lump of clay, but that's not who you are. That's not who God says you are. And that's not who Joseph was either. We learned that, you know what? Joseph, he came from a family that wasn't perfect. 
but God still used him. He can use you too. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Welcome kids, this is the time where we like to review what we talked about. So pay attention, try to answer along with us. Odds are they're gonna get every single one correct because I have faith in you guys, right? <laughs> okay, so let's see if you guys can get every question correct. Okay, the first question, what's up today? <laughs> In three, two, yes. No matter who you are or what you do, God can still use you. Everyone! That, Everyone. Yes. That is, <laughs> that is correct, though. Still You're, use us. I would say that was correct. He can still use you. He can still use me. He can yeah. use all of us. Yeah. Okay, we'll give both of you a point oh, for that. Okay. That was good. Okay. What is the name of the young man in our Bible story? Joseph. His name was Joseph. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Yep. How do you spell Joseph? <laughs> no. Exactly. All right. <laughs> next. <laughs> okay. Next question. What did Joseph's father give him as a present? It was a coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. A rainbow, almost. A rainbow, would you say? Mm -hmm. It I is would. what you would say. I said it. Okay. <laughs> next question. Did Joseph's brothers appreciate it when Joseph told on them? No. And yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. No, they didn't appreciate it. Would you? No, I wouldn't. I might throw him in a pit too. Oh. I'm just kidding, a different story. <laughs> I, I joke. Which of his sons did Jacob choose as his favorite? Joseph was his favorite. Mm -hmm. Jacob had favorites. Favorite, just one favorite, Joseph. Yes, and we knew that because he gave him the coat of many colors. Yes. Okay, according to our lesson today, nobody's family is blank. Perfect. Yep, Poe Buddy's nerfic. All right, next question. According to our lesson today, nobody's blank is perfect. Past? She said past, is that correct? Yes it is, nobody's past is perfect. We are all flawed. According to our lesson today, God can use blank. Everyone. Everyone and anyone. That includes you, that includes me, that includes Monique, and that includes Danielle. Did Joseph always make the right decision with his family? No. No. No one can. No. Mm -hmm. No. She said no as if it was an obvious answer. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Last question. Where was our power verse found? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Oh. Yes. Wow. That is correct. Nice yes. job. I hope you guys were paying attention and following along with us. If you want to go back and look at the questions again, we already gave you the answers now. So. Have fun with that. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>well, as I stated, we're going to be talking about Joseph. We're going to be looking at his life and seeing how his life and our life is similar. So over these next few weeks, I hope that you can learn that you can be used by God no matter what you've been through, that God loves you and he cares about you. And on this 4th of July weekend, I hope you have a great time with your family and a happy Independence Day. God bless you.